Hey guys, this is Connors from Gunroom TV, and today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the different types of actions that we have in our 22LR semi-autos. This is especially pertinent with the IPSC Mini Rifle Worlds coming up, where people all across the globe will be coming together to shoot these in a world level event. So the first gun we're gonna take a look at here today is the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. This is by far and away one of the most popular choices. It is the benchmark for reliability in the mini rifle game. And you see a lot of high level competitors using these over here and abroad. The 1522 is an AR platform, same as the other two that we're taking a look at here today, but it does have quite a few differences between it and a center fire AR-15. The gun is full polymer, which lends itself to lightweight. Of course, with the carbon fiber maglod handguard, it gets even lighter, making this an extremely good speed steels gun. Although with mini rifle evolving, people are wanting more and more weight between their hands and people are looking more towards metal receiver guns, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So the 1522 comes apart like any other AR-15. You pop the rear takedown pin out and swing the gun open. And this will be your default position for cleaning or maintaining the gun in the middle of a match. I'm gonna go ahead and separate the upper from the lower here now uh, by popping the front takedown pin out as well. Like that. And this will allow me to separate the upper and the lower from each other. So the lower is like most AR-15s. You can drop in here any AR trigger that you want, um, any AR mag release. You do need to get a specific 1522 mag well and safety, obviously available from Magload. And you have to be aware that you can't put a regular AR bolt release in this. You do have to have a Smith specific one. A lot of people for this reason choose to run a bad lever on here. I wouldn't recommend one personally for IPSC because it puts your finger inside the trigger guard for a control, which is not the greatest thing in the world. That aside, you'll notice that we don't have a buffer tube in here. This is a polymer stock and all of the recoil system is actually in the bolt and bolt carrier setup, which we'll get to right now. The 1522 dismantles sort of like an AR. You pull the handle and pull the bolt out. There's no lifting to be done here and the bolt handle pulls straight out again. There's no notch to find when you're pulling this out. You'll notice that the ejector is actually forms part of the barrel extension here. That is really important. You do need to be careful of that when you're cleaning it so you don't damage it. The bolt here is where we find the recoil system of the gun and why it doesn't need a buffer tube. You can see here that the recoil spring is integrated with the bolt carrier. It slides in these rails and it is a blowback bolt. Very simple mechanism and in the 1522, extremely reliable. There's a reason why competitors all over the world choose to use this gun for competition. Popping the gun back together is dead easy. We're just gonna start with the bolt handle, part way in, drop the bolt in and slide the entire lot home. We can now attach the upper back to the lower. One of the more unique options that you'll find is the Tipman Arms M422. The reason why this is unique is it uses a proper buffer system just like a center fire gun would. It has a very unique looking bolt carrier group um, because of that. The Tipman has a metal receiver but don't be fooled, this is not the same thing as a center fire receiver. It isn't made out of the same grades of metal, so you will find some wear and tear and breakages over time. That said, there are quite a number of people taking these to the world, so that must say something about the guns. Reliability wise, it's on par with the 1522. There really can't be any complaints when it comes to the reliability of these. The only thing is, I believe to be California compliant, there are quite a few things that you just cannot uh, modify on these. You can't get a regular safety for this. This is a prototype magload safety, and even we haven't released these yet because it's such a finickety thing to get right. Um, the mag release, you can use any AR-15 one, but again, you have a specific mag well. You can't just drop any trigger you want into here like you can with the Smith and the next gun we're gonna take a look at, and you can't, you basically can't put anything else on here apart from a stock and a, some four ends. So enough about that, let's take the gun apart and see what it looks like on the inside. I'm gonna pop the rear takedown pin here. And this is your default position once again for cleaning and maintaining the gun. I'm gonna close that up and take the upper off completely so we can have a look at the inside. So 
First thing we're going to notice in terms of the uniqueness of this gun is the uniqueness of the uh, bolt catch. This is a Tipman specific part. You cannot modify this or change this for anything else. Uh, bad levers do fit on this gun, so if you wanted a bad lever, you can run it. Again, not my recommendation. Here you can see the actual buffer tube. Um, that is a real buffer tube, although I find in a 2.2 you can hear it, which is quite off-putting. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this gun, but I can see why a lot of people might choose to run it in a competition. Taking a look at the upper, we can see some more of the Tipman uniqueness going on here. So, of course, we have, I should have shown this, we have a working dust cover and a working forward assist. Popping the bolt out, you need to slide the entire lot out as one unit, and then we can take a look at the very strange looking bolt mechanism. This is a blowback the same as the Smith. It has roughly the same bolt mass as the Smith, which probably lends to the reliability, but you also find we have some forward assist notches here. The bolt handle, as you can see, is not compatible with anything else but Tipman, so there's very little scope for upgrading on one of these. And it is a polymer bolt handle, which is a bit of a letdown, considering the rest of the gun is metal, even if it's not particularly high quality metal. Popping it back together is dead simple. We're just going to chuck the charging handle on there and slide the gun back together, just like that. Pop the upper back onto the lower. It's ready to rock and roll. The last gun we're gonna take a look at here is an option that a lot of overseas competitors will probably find themselves using. We're taking a proper center fire AR-15, which is of course compatible with any AR-15 components you like, and we are dropping a CMG bolt conversion kit into it. This is my new gun. I have elected for a Battle Arms receiver set. This is the lightweight receiver set, not the Ambi receiver set. I'm gonna do some more work on that a bit later with a little bit of customization. This is a development gun for me, so there are a lot of prototypes on here, such as the handguard, but I have an Anschutz carbon fiber wrap barrel along with a whole bunch of other goodness that's inside here. This gun was built by Otto at Cotswold Classic Arms. If you want a competition gun, there is no one else you should go to. He builds guns that are more reliable than a 1522. This gun has been faultless so far, not a single malfunction. And that's not down to the ammo, that's down to the gun. Taking this apart is just like any other AR-15 because it is a genuine centerfire AR-15. Pop the rear takedown pin, there's your maintenance mode right there. You've got access to everything you need. Uh, you will notice the lack of a buffer tube. The CMG kit that is in here doesn't require a buffer to run, although you can leave your buffer in there if you so choose. I've decided to leave it out because this is a dedicated 2.2 for me. I want to keep it as lightweight as possible. I'm just going to now pop the front takedown pin and separate the upper and the lower. Here you can see it's it is a standard AR-15. It, it will take any upgrade, any part that you want to put in there from an AR, especially things like triggers. They always work 100% of these, especially if you get it through Otto. It does have the better mag adapter. This enables you to use the super reliable 1522 magazines in this gun. And of course you can see I've got a flared mag well on there to aid in loading that. Now the upper is where we're gonna to start to see the conversion kit come in. I do have a dedicated 2.2 barrel and a dedicated 2.2 bolt on here, although CMG converted guns can also run with a 2.2.3 barrel. We've done some testing with this, and the 2.2.3 barrel is actually just as accurate as a dedicated 2.2 barrel when being shot at 100 yards. We haven't tested it at distances further than that, but that's where I guess the accuracy would start to suffer. But just to note, you can actually drop a CMG conversion kit, slightly different to this one, straight into a 223AR and run it. So in order to get the bolt out, I'm going to pull the bolt handle back, pull the bolt out, and then like any other AR, you have to line up the bolt handle with its notch in the receiver in order, in order to pull that out. One of the main differences you're gonna see in a dedicated 22 barrel is this little barrel extension that will mate up with the front of the CMG kit. The front of the CMG kit here has a hole to accept that barrel extension. The recoil system is once again built into the straight blowback bolt design. And if you had the 223 conversion, you'd essentially have an extension on here that looked a bit like a 223 cartridge, enabling you to drop that straight into your gun and run 22 with a better mag adapter. These can be a little tricky to get running reliably. If you want one that just runs, Otto Cotswold Classic Arms is your guy. 
Reassembly is just the reverse. We're gonna start off with the bolt handle. We have to line it up in the notch in the receiver, drop that in, push it in a little bit, and then we can slide the bolt in behind that. Close it all up, put it back together. Now the thing that is on everyone's mind, price points. The base spec Smith & Wesson can be picked up for around 650 pounds. By the time you've decked it out in all the mag load gear and put a nice trigger in there, you're probably still sub a thousand pounds. The Tipman Arms is next up on that price point at 900 pounds. For that, you do get the heaviest gun out of the bunch, which is a bit of a downside, but you do get that unique operating system. If it's something that speaks to you, then maybe this is the gun for you. Although compared to the other two guns, I would probably gravitate towards one of these. The Battle Arms here is a several thousand pound gun and it's probably not something that someone will be looking at as their first gun. However, if you wanted all the reliability and compatibility that this gun offers, Cotswold Classic Arms actually offer their L119, which is their base spec gun starting at 950 pounds. And you can get that down even cheaper if you spec it without the genuine Magpul furniture that's on there. If it was my choice, it would be obvious. For those of you that know me, you've seen me running a 1522 for the last couple of years. I've loved that gun, it's been super reliable, but with mini rifle evolving the way it is and requiring the use of more and more bipods, I'm looking for a stiffer receiver and I've opted to go for a CMG conversion. If I was trying to recommend a gun for you, I would say your choice should be either a 1522 at the low end of the budget of 650 pounds, you can pick them up used for a lot less, or the L119 from Cotswold Classic Arms. It's a full CMG conversion that's been given the Otto love to make sure it runs flawlessly. And it can be had for the same price, if not less than the Tipman. The Tipman Arms is a bit of an outlier from the other two. These are both competition proven guns. People have been using them for a very long time and it's a bit of a new kid on the block. It does have that unique operating system. If that really speaks to you, then maybe this is the gun for you. If it were my money, I would certainly be opting for one of the other two, especially when I can get a gun for 900 pounds from Cotswold Classic Arms operating on the same CMG system as this. That is full AR-15 compatible with all the upgrades. Whereas with the Tipman, you are really limited on the upgrades that you can do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you disagree with me, do leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to come back and tell you how wrong I think you are. If you want more content just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. This has been Connors with Gunroom TV. Shoot fast, don't miss.